but uh, you don't see any you know, problems we'll, with his we'll make, I'm not I'm not happy about certain things, but he's done a fantastic job running the EPA, which is very overriding. Well, another one bites the dust. Yesterday in the Trump administration, Rick Klein, ABC News political director from Washington, D.C. Good morning. Hey, great to be with you. Thank you. Uh, Scott Pruitt, he's out. Out. Yeah, and, and I think that the question really is what the final straw was and what took so long here. Absolutely. I don't remember a cabinet official that, that had as many uh, disparate scandals and investigations, more than a dozen uh, inter- investigations, all launched against him. Uh, and it appears that the president finally reached a breaking point with it and uh, asked for and received his resignation yesterday. Is there any indication, I heard uh, on ABC News last night during my show, that there were some 170 members of Congress that were asking for his ouster. Do you think the numbers just became too overwhelming? I think that was a piece of it, but I wouldn't overrate Congress here. I, I think the president was dealing with his own instincts. He wasn't going to, this, this wasn't a man that was going to be about to be impeached, in other words. Right. This was a man who was very unpopular, uh, who had a lot of prominent people calling for him to go, but also had a lot, of, uh, a lot of backing in the business community, a lot of folks who felt like he was doing the right work uh, and, and pursuing the right policies so far as it goes inside the EPA. Uh, but ultimately, the weight of these things was just too much. And I think the president making the decision that it was hurting him and hurting his White House. And I feel like that is the, what ended up being the last straw was the president's own judgment. How can somebody like Scott Pruitt be so politically stupid? <laughs> I had a lot of people asking, like, what, what, kind of, uh, what kind of laws were in place in Kansas when he was attorney general <laughs> that he thought he could get away with these right. things, right? What does that say about that? I, it was startling to me. Every time you thought, well, they couldn't get any wackier than this, you'd all of a sudden hear that he was trying to get a Chick-fil-A franchise for his wife. Right? Or, or a used mattress be, from a uh, Trump mattress hotel. From the hotel. The, the, the $50 a night uh, uh, Airbnb type place that he stayed in, he only had to pay on nights he was there. We get to keep his stuff there. I mean, just unbelievable stuff over and over again, time and again. And again, you know, there was no precedent for this. There's no public official that I'd have ever seen that had been allowed to do this many things. You're usually fired when you do a third of it or half of it. Or uh, one of yet them. He was a, or one of them, exactly. Yet he was able to hang on for all this time. And, and it was really stunning uh, that, 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 you, that he accumulated this kind of a, of a volume. But you're right, he was pushing the boundaries. And I think it, that ultimately, the critique that this was swamp-like behavior, I think swamp creatures weren't nearly as uh, pushing the envelope this much, weren't nearly <laughs> as galling in their... Uh, and their use of, of different perks, as, as he ended up being. And well, I think the, that ultimately, that ended it. Yeah, the two things that struck me as completely uh, over the top, one is uh, his use of security. Um, I think he had tougher security and, and a security detail uh, that was bigger than Trump himself. And then when he built the $43,000 cone of silence, uh, you know, the telephone booth. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, those are those are even smaller examples, but you're right; they're symbolically important. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I I think when the the last chapter is written on Scott Pruitt, um, he, he, a lot of people will be asking what, how anyone could think they could get away with behavior like this, and also what made this the final straw. The president doesn't like to fire people under pressure, despite like you know the the, the image that he has of of, of you're fired and and, right. and the like. But he, this, this obviously got to a point that just was not sustainable. Well, let me ask you this, Rick Klein. The legacy in terms of the EPA, the direction he headed was not popular with uh, more liberal or progressive people. Does it continue in that direction? And do we see uh, Scott Pruitt as someone who started us down that road? Yeah, I, I, I think his legacy of of deregulation, of rolling back environmental regulations and protections is real and will continue. Uh, the president went out of his way to say that he did a great job running the EPA, inside the EPA. It's really, this was about his behaviors outside. And I, I think under his deputy, who was confirmed by the Senate a couple months ago, you're likely to see a, a continuation in that direction. And in some ways, I think a, a real scrutiny of his record should be focusing on those things, because that's the mission of the EPA the personal stuff, although all of it matters when you're talking about taxpayer dollars. Absolutely. Now, Rick Klein, I'm going to go uh, off the page a little bit here and ask you, what are the Republicans doing in Russia on their trip? Well, a bunch of them were there for Fourth of July, believe it or not. Uh, some, of the, some of it was aimed at trying to send messages to Trump, I think, as much as to Putin, uh, but, but trying to tell the Putin government that 
uh, whatever you hear from the president directly, there are other eyes watching you, including in his own party back home. And I think some of it was signaling to the president that there's limits in, in how, what, how much he can give away and how far he goes. And I think those are important signals, given what the president has said in the past about Putin and about Russia. So this is a high-stakes moment. Uh, the president's going to be uh, meeting at the NATO summit and then meeting with Putin himself. So a, a lot going on in a lot of different directions. And I think the, the, the intent of these Republican members of Congress is just to remind everyone involved that, uh, that even the president doesn't speak for uh, the United States in and of himself. Uh, a, a government of checks and balances. Thank you very much, uh, Rick Klein, hey, ABC you. News political director from Washington.